welcome to the Esmeric Art Studio. So the challenge was to do something with your scraps. And as I was looking through my scrap stash, I found these two pieces. It's a piece of um, copper and a piece of aluminum. And I've decided that I would like to make a um, jewelry piece out of it. And I'm also going to use this texture plate. It is a sunflower texture plate, and that is what I will be using. So there's already marks on here, but um, I will have to use it as is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am just going to secure it to the texture plate. The same as what you would secure a stencil, anything doesn't matter. So once this is secured, I'm just going to go over with my finger and just to see where about it is. And then going in with my paper stump and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the lines and go around and try and get as much detail down as what I can. I have most done so the next step is I am going to take my Teflon tool and I am just going to start going over and around it again actually I think I'm first going to use the white side and this is literally just going in almost like scratching over it coming in with another Teflon tool which have a um, sharper end and really just going in and refining each and every little petal. This is a nice thing about working with texture plates. It is an easy way to do something when you are in a hurry. It's also, as I've just realized, quick and easy way to use up all your scraps and you can make really nice things with the texture plates there's a different um, there's quite a few different texture plates that's out there um, this one for instance have the sunflowers on the one side and on the other side it's got dominoes um, some is double-sided not all is double-sided depending on where you can find some a couple of years ago, they were really available all over the place and then they sort of start disappearing and I've noticed that they are actually making a comeback again. So just be uh, on the lookout. There is a couple of them in the Esmeric Art Store. Not the big ones though. Those are more, the ones that I carry is more for borders. So have a look. There you go. It looks like everything has been done now. So I'm going to remove this and do exactly the same with the aluminum one as well. So I gathered a couple of things that I'm going to need. Some paint to paint my substrate and or my blank. I didn't really know how I was going to adhere this and then I looked through my stash and I found this Christmas ornament and I was thinking up oh, this is going to work perfectly it will fit on there so I can glue that together there 
I got some a leather thong and some beads as well that I'm going to string through and um, what else oh and some paint just to paint oh, I've already said paint so just going to give this a quick paint and then while the one side dry I will continue on with the rest So also when you paint this, um, you don't just make sure the sides are nicely covered and the outer rims, because your the aluminum and the copper, the sunflower is going to cover the. Centers is going to cover the center. So the colors I chose to use was a burnt sienna as well as a copper. I just thought that it would complement the leather thong or the leather string that I have that I'm going to use. Oh, it's difficult to try and get my brush in there. I'm going to put this off to the side and as usual I don't have much but I'm just going to clean my brush first on my journal page. This is still from a project that I was working on the other day which I have used similar colors. While the paint is drying I'm just going to come in and finish off this going to flatten it I was going to cut it close to the petals but then I realized it is a little bit embossed so it is not really going to work so I would need to just flatten it around and cut it out in a circle so as well I looked around in my studio and I found this and this will work to cut it out if you don't have a stencil that works find something i'm sure everybody has something in their stash that is going to work So if you can, even if it's just on a piece of paper, always try and clean your brushes because you can always use that um, in the next project. So basically, over the last two projects or this project and a previous one, I have a background that is done. I'm going to go in with a texture wheel and I'm just going to add some extra definition or some mark makings here just to round it off because it looks pretty dull around the edges so i'm just gonna go in and out and go all around with this to finish this off i'm just going to take this big wheel and i'm just gonna go slowly try and do it right on the edge not always possible For me someone else might be able to and this is not working very well on the copper I'm trying to go as close to the edges what I can but it's still more in than what I wanted Oh, this aluminum is so much softer. Got 
got my gloves and I am using the water-based permanent marker on the aluminum and I'm just quickly going to go in and do some blackening with it. So when you wipe off the black, it all depends on the look that you would like to have. Some prefer it quite dark, others prefer it almost back to the silver again with just a hint of the black. It's all personal preference. There's definitely no right way or a wrong way to do this. The most important about this is just to remember to use a permanent marker, which is for water base or and not a solvent marker because as soon as you go into the solvent marker once it's on you you are not going to be able to get it back off again so the beads that i've chosen to put on the string um, that's also very similar to the look that i'm going and that's why I didn't go for just plain silver or the aluminum color because I know this was going to match the sunflower once I have taken off the blackening. I'm just going to put some there. It's a funny spot there. I think I quite like this look. Yep. And for the copper, I'm actually going to use some of the burnt sienna. And for the paint, I'm going to use my finger. I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to give it a couple of seconds to dry. Not enough left for my finger to put on my book or my journal. You also could have gone in with the black onto the copper. That would have been good too. I was actually only thinking while I was removing this that I could have gone in with the black as well. Just give it a completely different look. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go just on the centerpiece. The sunflower is black there. I think I'm happy with that too. I'm going to go ahead and seal this, which I need to do outside. And then we will start assembling everything. So the sealer that I'm using is, the, I just buy it from the hardware store. It is the 
rust-oleum painter touch and i'm using the gloss you can also use matte or there's also a semi-gloss available one thing about when you do seal you have to remember not to go and spray it like this it's literally a zoop 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 kind of spray and at least keep it about 12 inches or 30 centimeters away from your work if you spray that i think i'm going to no i'm not going to spray that now otherwise my glue won't stick to that So I've gathered a couple of things that I'm going to need. I got some a piece of leather. I got some beads as well as some findings or fastenings that I'm going to use to just put this all together. Also, I've gone ahead and I have sealed these as well as put some beeswax in on second thoughts maybe this is something that i not would have done because as i was trying to get it flat again it cracked but i'm just going to work with that i will definitely use something else if i do this again i was thinking maybe this would be a good time to try some silicon um and fill it with silicone and use that as an adhesive as well whether it's going to work i'm not exactly sure but i am going to try it for now i'm just going to use my all over 450 quick adhesive dry i really like working with this it's almost like a um cold hot glue it does have a bit of a smell which i don't care for but it does do the trick and again just like the um hot glue it's easy to get rid of the strands and the ones that are seeping out on the side so the reason i've decided to put some beeswax in here is just to give it a little bit of definition to lift it slightly because it was very flat when i had a look at it it was very flat and um if we just excuse me I use a baseball ball and I just move and I just draped it over here. There's different things that you can do. Um, you can also, you could have just hold it in your hand and move it around or form the dome. There's different ways to do that. So I'm just going to give this a couple of seconds to set and then I will come in and remove the glue on the side another reason i like working with this glue is because it gives you a little bit of work time i use the sukwon double-sided adhesive lots of time but i find that with this it gives you that working time with the sukwon or double-sided adhesive once it's down it's down you can't move it so it all depends what is important for you, whether you want to go to have a very good adhere or whether you still want some moving time. This do stay put. Once this is dry, it absolutely stay put. It does not come on off and it does not move either. Okay, I'm going to leave this now again to dry, work on to the... The beads and the leather and then i'll come back and i'll add the second side or the silver side so i've gone ahead and i've added one bead in already just to get sort of my center point and now it's just really putting the rest of the beads in so i'm going to do and I chose a sort of orangey one to go with the copper and then, then the silver to complement the aluminum if that's on this other side. This is a fairly tight bead. So I'm going to use this as a stopper. And this is going to be a little bit difficult just to squeeze this through. Oh, no, not as much. But because it is a little bit tighter, the hole, it is, because as you can see, this is moving around fairly easy. But the moment I'm going to use this as a stopper, 
it does move but it does not move as much as what it is without the stopper so i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to also um, add the beads to the other side as well next up is the fastness i just want to mention something if you can see this is sort of a play around to get it equal and i'm sure if we're going to wear this it is also going to move around i did try to put two smaller beads um, i'm not sure if you can see exactly i did try to put two smaller beads in but the holes were just not big enough to um for to get the leather through so i've decided just to play around with this and just keep it um as it is like this so as i said next is the fastening so i'm just going to add some o-rings here and using my two little beading tongs and when you work with these little rings you always have to remember it's got a memory so whatever you do to the one side you have to do exactly the opposite to the other side so i'm just going to move it slightly to open the ring and i'm going to push my leather through and because i've moved it this way or towards me i'm just going to close it again towards me and i'm using the second pliers just to hold it and all i'm doing is i'm just moving it back and um there you go you have your circle is completed so this one is i am going to add uh, through here okay so as for the tying or the finishing off there's one of two ways you can do it you can um either just go in and tie a knot which you know what works perfectly and you can just swing it around your neck alternatively you can put some hardware there as well or some closings and use that so for this one i think i'm going to do that if it works out i might just keep it if not i'll just tie it so i'm gonna move this through there and pull this through and this is where the tricky part is going to come in to secure this um I do not have the right wiring to do this, but usually if I do work with this and I finish it off or tie it, um, what I would do is I would use um, some wire. And as I said, I do not have the, the right thickness of wire. So I've found some other wire here, seeing that this is using up our scraps. Some other wire, I must have bought it for something and I can't even remember what and it was just lying here. I haven't used it since that project. So I'm just going to go ahead and I've put it in between the two. And now I'm just going to start working around and I'm just going... To sort of roll it around because this will keep it intact.
So as I was finishing off the second one, I was thinking that you can actually use some um, crimpers as well. So for the ones who don't do beading, crimper is something that you just put around and you just tighten it. But because the whole challenge was to use some scraps and not something new and I didn't have some crimpers, so that's why I've kept on going with this. So this doesn't look too bad, not the neatest. Uh, I don't think I will sell this ever. I'm just going to wear it myself. On to the next step. This one is fairly dry. One of the best investments you can make if you work with glue is a um, gummy razor. It really works very well. They come in different sizes. And you're just going to go around. And you're literally just going to go and erase and then it's just getting rid of all the fluff that is there from the eraser. Um, it also come in a, um, this one I've used quite a lot, you can see how the glue is stuck to it. So you just go around. And this actually works better for this project than the other one. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean all the glue here. So glue is removed and I'm quickly going to add here the opposite side. I'm just putting it on a soft foam mat. Well, it's, it's still a sturdy foam mat. And... Adding glue. Also, while I was cleaning the glue, it was as if it just needed something else. It, you know how you sometimes look at something and it doesn't look like it's been finished off properly? That is the idea that I got. So I had a look in my stash as well. And I'll show you now what I found. And I think I'm going to add that around as well to finish it off of course it's not the right color that i need it it will work for the silver side but for the copper i think i'm just going to go ahead and use some alcohol inks and color it the copper color with the alcohol inks as for positioning this looks fairly good so one side and opposite side so while this the silver side is um, setting I'll show you what I'm going to do is I found some of these um, I don't know I call it bathroom black beads and I'm going to run a strand of it just all around the room there so I think the silver side is set. I'm going to squirt a little bit of glue out onto, this is some copper metal tape. I'm going to be using a sorry I lost my train of thought there. I'm going to use a toothpick and I'm just going to start adding the glue on here. And as I'm adding the glue, I'm just going to go around and add these little bubbles too. You can also go around, I guess, and just give it a squirt with the glue. But I find because this is so thin, and I've already cleared off a lot of glue. I don't want to go back in and spend another five minutes or so cleaning glue. So I'm going to go all around, add this, as well as add these on the opposite side.
So once you are done, you can always go back in, but give it at least a good five to 10 minutes before you do this test. And you can feel if it is loose somewhere, and then you can just always go back in with a little bit of glue and just reattach it. If you do it before the time, you will definitely be able to move some of this. Um, I did the test and it feels like this is secure all over. So while I was waiting for the glue to dry as well, I got my alcohol inks out. And I, of course, my first thought was using the copper because um, it's copper. But it turned out that the copper is actually too brown. So when you look at the first three little bubbles there, it is just way too brown to match this. And then the next thing I did was I took out my stash of um, my samples. I've printed these off the Ranger website and there's quite a few of them. So you have the alcohol inks, distress oxides, distress inks, um distress stains there's, there's quite a few of them and as you purchase you can just add your little dots in there so looking at this the one that looks closest for me was the either the terracotta or the rust the rust didn't work out so when i tried the terracotta that was the one that um i'm actually going to use to paint this one so those are the little there you can see the difference I don't know if you can see there but the copper is definitely too coppery and the terracotta is very complementary so all i'm going to do i'm just going to add a drop or two there i'm going to go in with my paintbrush and i use the same paintbrush all the time and i'm just going to start painting it on it's more like a orangey copper but it still does the trick it looks closer than what the copper is. It's a little bit orange, but personally, I prefer that to the brown copper. Nice thing about the alcohol ink is if you decide you don't like it, you can just go ahead and use some alcohol or the delifter. And you can just remove it. So I will go ahead and um, seal this again. Just because of the alcohol ink now. I don't know. I've never really tested it. To see if it will rub off after a while if you don't seal it. Don't want to do it with this one though. So here and there was a spot that I did go off the little bubbles and um, touch onto the copper self or my sunflower design. I'm not going to be really finicky about that to get that off. So there you go. I don't think it looks too bad. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Something else I considered putting up was a couple of years ago as well, I did a project on with um, polymer clay and I had to put some bling on there and I got these bracelets from the dollar store and these are really good for things like this. So it really complemented this as well. It actually looked very good, but it was not matching the um, string that I'm going to hang this on. Maybe if it was something else, I still would have used this, but for this project, it just was not a go ahead. Okay. So next, I'm just going to put all of this together. Oh, one last thing. When I do use this, um, my paintbrush, I just use some alcohol spray ink, or oh, some spray ink, some alcohol. I spray it on my brush and I just keep on wiping it until it is clean. I 
I have two brushes that I use continuously um, for the alcohol inks. This one I usually use to paint with and then there's another one that if I would have gone in to pick up that, I would have used that one. So there you go, nice and clean for the next use. Back to where this have a memory, I am just going to open it to the one side. I think I might need to open it a little bit more. Again, just use it to the right side. And I am going to slide this in. And then again, I am just going to close it. If you have any suggestions or there's anything that you have noticed here that you have an easier way to do it or a better way to do it, absolutely um, put it down in the comments. I learn so much every day and it is just such a fun place and learning through my mistakes helps you. That's awesome because that's the one thing about my channel. All my mistakes and things that happens is going to be part of this. It's not going to be edited out. So there you go. It's done. So a double-sided necklace, copper or silver, depending on which side you prefer. So I'll be the model for today's project. Once I had it around my neck, I just tied a knot in the back and it can double up as a short necklace as well. The challenge for me was to make something out of all your scrap pieces. In the end, I did use something new to just tie it all together, but all over, I think I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, starting with a Christmas ornament as a blank and then just adding some of the copper as well as the silver and bringing it all together. If there's something that you can do with the scraps in, that you have lying around, please share with us um, any ideas what we can do with scraps. We tend to keep them and sometimes just never use them. And this might be a way to start using up all those little scraps that we do have. This has definitely um, given me a couple of more ideas that I'm going to try. Hope you've enjoyed spending time with me in the studio today and always remember the world of reality has its limits but the world of imagination is boundless.